And I, I'm curious, have you heard of the, the book Deep Work by Cal Newport? No, I haven't. Um, it, it's actually the yellow book. I don't know if you can see it right up there. But, I see it. Uh, yes, it's had I a, see it. Yeah, it had a big impact on me. I read it for the first time a year ago. And he um, he's written on various books for mostly college students. Um, and it talks about, you know, the, the absence and the increased difficulty of performing deep work now versus, um, you know, 20, 30 years ago with uh, oh, wow. the increased access like social media and, and phones. And it makes the case both for time blocking and uh, just as a time management um, sort of system, but also specifically time blocking bouts of time for you to perform deep work. That's distraction free with your iPhone, you know, do not disturb away from you. Um, and he makes a case in the book that the the uh, commodity that's going to become extremely valuable um, in the economy in the next couple of decades is individuals who can perform deep bouts of work are going to outpace oh. from a productivity perspective those individuals who maybe don't value it or just aren't capable of performing deep bouts of work. Um, and connecting that to your example of being in the library and reading the biology book for, for three hours, um, I mean, me just thinking about my own experience, I, I don't remember the last time where I had a work bout that was close to three hours. You know, I try to schedule deep work as much as possible, but it definitely seems like an art or a task that's sort of lost its way um, in, in, in the way, you know, social media has evolved and impacted uh, our society. I'm curious, as a professor, is this something that you've observed to be of a, a particular struggle in, in Gen Z? And maybe if you have some ideas on how you might promote, um, you know, deliberate bouts of work with your students. Excellent. I didn't know about that book. I'm going to look into it. That's a wonderful topic. And um, yeah, so just to, to clarify, I would be sitting at the library. I would read, you know, a half hour. I would look up and then go back down. But, you know, I would literally be like, you know, three hours. And um, what I see from the Gen Z generation, which I like, is they're concerned about this. They're 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 aware of it. They're they want to find ways to to be able to do deep work. Uh, 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 and and the other thing is that, as I mentioned before, the gains come sometimes after an hour and a half into something. Now, what's really interesting though is that. I am noticing in the musician sphere, and I don't have data on this, but I see some of the best musicians I've ever seen. So I know they're doing deep work because, you know, I know I know some drummers who drum for six hours a day um, just to, like, keep their, their level high. So, and I see on, on YouTube, like, these young, you know, shredders on guitar – that must be taking six hours a day. There's no way. So that's really interesting. How are they getting away with it? What what are they doing? And this is more a question for you. How come they're pulling it off? Because there's no way you could be on your phone and be, or or are they doing it while looking at something? Or maybe they maybe they are multitasking. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think there's something to be said about pursuits and fields where deep work um has to be performed in isolation versus other fields where in music um you know you can perform deep work while you're collaborating with others and that makes for a much more dynamic fun engaging uh bout of work whereas if you think about fields like computer science or neuroscience or you know i study finance it's like for a lot of these topics you have to go into isolation and you have to focus um on your task solely and it, it, there isn't much space for collaboration uh, unless, you know, you're in practice and working on a field. But, you know, I'm learning financial modeling right now. And that's something where uh, most of the time has to just be spent on trial and error and figuring out why one model, uh, why the formula in one model is, isn't is referencing correctly or how I want to structure the architecture of the model. And that's something that, uh, in my experience, you know, I've worked, uh, I, I uh, was really focused on music my first year of college. And it definitely seems like a much less engaging um, sort of like archetype of, of deep work. That's a great point, uh, Juan. Uh, I also want to mention that a colleague of mine at UCSF wrote a book called The Distracted Mind, which is about a lot of these things. And uh, Adam Ghazali, he's a world expert on distraction. And uh, what I've heard from people at Toyota, for example, is that the um, all of the measures that we're taking to make car accidents less likely, you know, seat belts and the sensors and all that, they led to all these wonderful effects. And then when the cell phone arrived, now we're back to having 
uh, uh, those gains were lost. And not only that, there's um, qualitatively different kinds of accidents now. So there's types of accidents that didn't occur before. You know, people like just driving into the car in front of them um, because they're they're distracted. Now, one thing that I that I am a little worried about, which is more than just you know the ability to do deep work, is um, only recently have I started hearing from students things like. I'm sorry, I can't attend. I can't attend to your lecture unless I'm also looking at the phone. Mm -hmm. So this is this is a new now. If it, could it be that one thing is the inability to do deep work, and it, are there bigger changes in the brain now that have resulted from years of you know the the stimulation from from the devices and 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 that thing? And I don't know about that, but yeah. that would that is a little beyond, oh, I can't sit in the library for two hours to read a book. If someone says, I can't have a conversation with you unless I'm simultaneously looking at something, then that that's, I think, qualitatively different. Um, yeah, I think getting to the point where um, you struggle to get through a lecture without having some other tasks, um, like going through social media or playing a game is a little concerning. Although just in my personal experience, one thing that I did pretty much every day if not every other day throughout um, all of high school and even middle school was I'd play video games and listen to podcasts in the background. And it was really weird in that like playing video games would sort of like numb my brain in a way. And then I'd just like get into this flow state where I'd lock into the podcast. And um, I think it made for like the development of just like a general understanding of a bunch of different topics that I was just curious about. But I think there is something to be said about, you know, de deliberate engagement in, in a lecture where you can raise your hand and ask a question versus sort of more like passive uh, educational experiences, like just listening to a podcast um, at, at, at your house, playing video games or something like that. Right, right. Yeah. And so, you know, people are, are studying uh, the effects of these things and and they're trying now, I think they're trying to, rec the recommendation is that um, adolescents not get devices until high school or something like that. Mm -hmm.